All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Today, I'm here with another talented person from Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. His name is Rob. You may know him. Is it Stranger Danger? That's what they call you? Yeah, it is It is Stranger Danger. Um, that is a bit of a, a follow-up from characters of the past. So, started out as Stranger um, based on my character that I played for Universal. Right. Um, in 2013, I want to say, when we opened The Purge at the beginning, I played uh, the the ringleader from that, that whole crew. His name is The Polite Stranger. Okay. I've heard it called The Polite Leader as well, but I did that character for a few years with Universal Studios, and, uh, you know, after that, I had a buddy, Kevin, who most people either know as Nails or the great pump, Greatest Pumpkin, I think. <laughs> he did some stuff with the Cade. Uh, okay. He did the QM sliders years back, and that's how I got brought over. Right. Uh, was We were working The Walking Dead at Universal together, and uh, he was like, man, I've been, I've been scaring with the sliders at Queen Mary. And I was like, oh, yeah, dude, I haven't slid in a long time, and I'd love to get back into it. So I went to a few practices and then, you know, got into it that season and just uh, showing up as a, as a spare character uh, a couple nights. Um, shout out David Wally for being awesome <laughs> and – allowing a lot of us other monsters from different haunts to come play at the grounds and uh i fell in love immediately so man so uh let's start from the beginning man i mean you mentioned i want to know first off what was the what was it man what what made you want to do this what made you want to get into this world of scaring man um so that's actually a lot longer than (laughs) it should be um i actually went to Knott's scary farm when i was in fifth grade right um I had a buddy who was like doing a birthday party when we were in fifth grade and uh, I went to Knott's, you know, as a kid. Right. And uh, I grew up watching like sci-fi scary movies with my dad a lot. Um, But (laughs) I won't lie, fifth grade when I showed up in Knott's, we did the whole pre-scare where they line you up on that backside right outside of uh, Ghost Town. Right. And they let us out and I bawled. (laughs) I first hour into the night, dude, I was, you know, what, like nine, 10 years old, just crying, uh, for the first hour. (laughs) But, you know, I remember walking around a little bit and eventually getting the hang of it and, uh, being like, this is really, really cool. Like, holy crap, this is fun. And then what ended up making me love the night was playing around in carnival. Nice. Um, so fun, you know, fun to turn around now and be a clown with, with the dark Harbor, you know, crew and be a slider over there and, uh, be the clown that kind of turned me onto it. But, uh, yeah, from then, uh, at middle school, I was in drama and we did a haunted house that we put on nice. every year. And so we, we did everything. We built the maze. Uh, you know, we designed certain rooms every year. It was a little different. So we went into the backbone of it, you know, um, it was, it was really cool to get on that side of it, you know, to build the maze and be in certain aspects that, now as an actor, I don't get to take part in, you know? Right. Um, so we did that for years. And then uh, I always had remembered sliding and all the sliding they did at, uh, you know, knots. Right. And so when I was doing those haunts, I remember throwing on my old skating knee pads and like <laughs> didn't have the shoes, didn't have the gloves and like would just run around and throw myself on the floor. I can remember one time... <laughs> Having a buddy of mine uh, tell me behind his car on my knee pads. <laughs> uh, Dude, extreme yeah. right there, man. I love it. Yeah, I ruined some shoes real quick doing that. <laughs> uh, Mom was not too happy with that. <laughs> uh, but then on out, yeah, I, uh, you know, went years and years, went through high school, didn't really do much haunting. Um, and then I, uh, I showed up to Universal out of like looking it up after years of going to haunts repeatedly. Right. <clears throat> pardon me i was a i was a huge scary farm addict every year i was one of the people looking for you know coupons and whatever i could to like make it cheaper to get to go right. um i would go either once or multiple times now it turns out i got a lot of friends over at knots which is really cool um <laughs> there you go you know i see you're wearing infected shout out to greg yeah you, there you go um greg is sweet um he's actually wanted me to come over and play at knots and uh and i'd get the big three which would be sweet if i could do all there three haunts down there but you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, it turned out, uh, showed up, got very, very lucky with my first year at uh, Horror Nights. And uh, from then on out, you know, I stayed with Universal for quite a few years. Um, 
I, I did a lot of characters with them throughout the park uh, with Horror Nights. I also uh, performed within Grinchmas as well. Um, and then I was uh, in the opening cast of the Walking Dead maze there that they did, nice. which was really cool. That's yeah, cool. That was a fun, it was a fun event for, you know, it's sad to see that it's gone now. But, yeah. Uh, but that's how I ended up, you know, going into uh, Queen Mary was we were working day ops for the, the maze there. And a lot of us were getting let go to go do horror nights in the maze as well. And so Kevin had been, you know, working down in Long Beach with uh, Squeaks. So uh, he was like, come on down and hang out, man. It's a lot of fun. Right. And then again, you know, thank you, David Wally. He would do a couple nights every year uh, for a few years that I can remember. I remember going to visit a bunch of my universal friends at Dark Harbor when he would allow uh, like a play night, you know, right. Uh, he would have some of the, the universal people come in and, you know, Kenny O'Brien, um, you know, Lance, Lance Knight was a big one. Will Galarza, all those guys would go down and then Kevin and play. And so I uh, jumped ship <laughs> and uh, went down to Queen Mary and fell in love, man. More like you, you, you bordered ship when you went to Queen Mary, man. I mean, I guess. Yeah, Either way. <laughs> uh, At the end of the day, dude, yeah, yeah. I left one home for another. Yeah. Uh, so l- let's talk a little bit about your Horn Nights days, man. I mean, uh, you mentioned Purge. What else did you do while you were at Horn Nights, man? Um, I was always up there in the front of the park in Scare Zone 1. So I did, you know, I uh, Exterminators as well. I did get to play a couple nights down on the tram uh, when they still had the purge on the tram. Nice. Um, getting to go down and play as the play stranger again with them was a lot of fun. Uh, see a different side of things. Right. Um, I'm trying to think. We did Exterminators, and then I'm trying to remember what the year after that was. <laughs> it might have been that that was Walking Dead. I think I might have already been in Walking Dead at that time. Right. And that we were stuck you know, not stuck, but we're in the maze as opposed to getting, you know, out on the street and playing. Right. Um, but yeah, we did 2013 purge, 2014 purge. Oh heck, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get yelled at for not remembering what we uh, did for all the for, all for the, the HHN fanboys are gonna be in the call. It was this year and this year, you know. Dude, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, but I, it's been a while. I remember purge and exterminators. Uh, exterminators was a lot of fun. That was the first chance I got to jump up and do brigade right. and uh, throw a chainsaw around. And those guys that do brigade, man, are nuts. Right. <laughs> to be out there and get that that you know whether it's 35, 45 minutes set. Yeah. Um, those guys do not mess around yeah. in that brigade. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't keep up with them. I see guys. <laughs> Uh, one of my buddies who's been doing brigade for, for years is a chainsaw. Um, he will be out in between our breaks between what we do is like a breakout. Right. He'll be over there doing push ups. Oh man. Just on the floor, just like keeping doing with it, huh? keeping the adrenaline going. Oh, it's, it's gnarly. It's, you know, I don't know how that guy keeps up his energy. <laughs> um, you know, good on you. <laughs> Cause I could not do that. Yeah. I feel you, man. Uh, yeah. yeah Cause you know, Horror Nights for me was, was the reason you know, I, I really started getting into that. I'm the same with you with the Knots story, though. Back in 2008, when I first went to Knots, you know, I lasted two hours and, and couldn't do it, man. I was in fifth grade and, you know, I couldn't do it. But I, I redeemed myself back in 2011 with uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Um, went for the first time ever. Uh, that was like the first haunt I went to since Not Scary Farm. And, nice. and you know, went fell in love with it and then the next mm-hmm. year you know i did both horror nights and knots and from then on out i started exploring and and seeing what everyone has to offer um so horror nights always has a special place in my heart man that's what it's one of my favorite haunts but you know in the past you know a couple years since doing the channel we've gotten to go to queen mary's dark harbor we've gotten to go to los angeles hayride we've got, gotten to go to you know more knots other haunts home haunts whatnot uh and we've gotten to really explore what every all the creativity people have to bring oh, to yeah. the table it's man. out there <laughs> um, so, you know, when you, when, when you talk about Horror Nights, man, it just, you know, it always has a special place in my heart and I'll never forget this. Is, that was the essential reason why I started this channel was to talk, you know, Horror Nights speculations and whatnot, but you can't do that all year round. You know, it gets, it gets a little repetitive and whatnot. So yes, sir. Not wrong. I, 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 I do find a lot of enjoyment to interview people like you who, who have been in the industry for some time and who, who have hopped around and whatnot. Speaking of hopping around, man, you know, you, you said that you've done a couple, uh, you, you did some time at uh, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, man. Uh, what did you do? What was your character and what was the differences, man? Um, it, Unfortunately for me personally, 
uh, it's night and day. Right. Because, you know, Horror Nights does what it does very well. You know, they go big for the buck. You know, like their sets are out of this world a lot of times. Uh, One of my more recent favorite mazes they ever did was uh, the the Universal's Monsters remix. Oh. Which was, man, like I'm a huge, uh, like classic book nerd. So Dracula, Frankenstein, all that stuff. I got a couple copies on my shelf back there. But, uh Man, they really, really did that maze well. The, uh, the 2018 one, right? I I think it might have been 2018, 20, or maybe 2017. 20, Universal Monsters was 20, 2018. I, what, 2018. You're, you know, you're probably no better than I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the time, you know. But I, was, that, I have uh, to agree with you. That place. maze, solid, man absolutely killed it you know um i was very very impressed and you know after being there for years and seeing a lot of the mazes i mean i've gone since you know 2009 right to horror nights is a guest as well and i can remember the michael myers maze back then right and that one you know that one back then really drew me in Mm -hmm. so yeah i gotta i gotta credit to horror nights that they do what they do very well right um you know john murdy's out there playing a crap in December, and Willi- uh, Chris Williams, man, they, those guys. Yeah, really Chris it. is a Chris is a fantastic guy. Yeah. I've I've sat and had chats with him a bunch, and he's really really cool. Yeah, um, Murdy's always just running at a hundred percent all the time, so yeah. it's hard to ever really get the the chance to sit and talk with a guy. But yeah. um, I mean, you he's know, probably already they, thinking about the next year's event as the this year's event's going on. You know? Yeah, I can remember him saying something about exterminators. Like I was driving home and I see the big exterminator sign on the thing, and that's what you know. What if that was reversed? Right. That was his idea. And that I was, was like, awesome. dang, like, what a what a weird place for it to hit. Just to, but, sit, uh, just to sit in a room with him for hours, man. That'd be fun, you know? They, uh, yeah, we, we get somewhat of an opportunity to kind of do that. That's you know, cool. not to, I don't want to get in trouble by saying too much about no, I what feel, they yeah. do. Because I know they like to be top secret about their stuff. Right. Uh, but, you know, they are, they are very impressive with their showmanship. Right. Uh, for me personally, though, I love what I get to do at Dark Harbor. Um, I, I get to be balls to the wall, you know? Um, and uh, Stranger kind of came to fruition. I got the name because of my character at, at Universal. Nice. Um, Kevin went backstage and when he brought me into the slider tent, he was like, hey guys, this is the guy that played the polite Stranger over at Universal Studios. And they were like, oh shit, that was you dude? Like, you were great, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So we got to talking and then, you know, later that night, it was like, no, your name's Stranger. That's nice. your name now. Um, and that same year, uh, I did a little bit of maze and then a little bit of streets. I basically asked David, I was like, Hey man, if you know, I know I got breaks, but if on my breaks, I'm so happy to like show up on the street running around sliding, is that going to be an issue? And he was like, if you got the energy, go for it. Nice. So I went to touch up that first night, <laughs> probably ooh, like every time I had more than 15 minutes to breathe, right. I would be like, I got to go run and get my makeup touched up. Yeah, because I was I was sweating buckets, man, because I was every chance I could. I was out throwing my knees on the floor. Um, howdy. Um, <laughs> dogs outside going crazy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I got really excited, you know, hung with the guys on the on the team as much as I could. And then uh, I got, again, very lucky to an extent that I got like spliced into the show my first year hanging around Dark Harbor. Right. Because uh, Mute who I don't know if you know, uh, was a character back uh, back in the day. Okay. Ended up, you know, having to leave for some reason. And uh, he was he was a very, very big character in the story of the show at that time. Right. So there was a bit that Sparrow can vouch uh, <laughs> on this. Um, I kissed him in the middle of the show. Um, oh, nice. There you go. There was a whole bit where Squeaks uh, snapped Sparrow's neck. He fell on the floor and everyone was like, what do we do? And so me being stranger, and then that's how stranger danger got brought up. Because <laughs> I got, I crept out into the street like a weirdo and like looked around and bent down. And the whole bit was I was supposed to breathe and give him CPR, but I just, you know, I clamored in one. Right. Uh, in the show. And uh, so, yeah, that's how that name came to be. Sweet. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of evolved a little bit from there. I feel like it's a mix of, you know, kind of like, if uh, the played stranger from the purge had like a joker accident and, nice like, like kind of lost his his mind you know right. um his background stranger's background is he was the stunt man for the circus okay and ended up having a stunt go haywire um so he's got an attitude you know i uh 
<laughs> Scott can vouch. I am one of the troublemakers when I'm out on the street. Sorry, David. A lot of the meetings that end up, uh, hey, you guys can't do that anymore is, you know, my fault. fault. Um, you know, don't bang on the porta potties. That's me and Killis. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, everyone in Dark Harbor. That's our fault. Um, uh, don't put the tokens in your mouth. That was another one that was. Oh, I man. A lot of that. I would. Uh, I put them in my mouth and I always have, you know, paint in my mouth. Um, right. So they come out and they're a different color. That's great. Um, <laughs> You're going home with so an exclusives would, token, man. Or, you know, or I'm just, that's the whole, you know, make people do things for the tokens. Right. You know, that's why that's not able to be happening at, at Dark Harbor anymore. <laughs> I did that way too much. Um, I remember at one point I bit one in half and oh, I like wow. slid them out of my mouth one piece at a time. And they were like, what? You can't. <laughs> Do anything with it it's a half and i was like Meh, and then spit out the other half and they're like what, the, what do we do i was like tell them it was my fault you know and uh they'll they should let you through it'll be fine they're like put oh, okay here's another token also uh i should never have gotten tokens in the first place that uh scott should have known that that was gonna happen yeah uh you know uh <laughs> scott will vouch also that i'm uh, number one a-hole on the team. <laughs> I, uh, I like to be uh, a little chatty. Oops. <laughs> and a little, uh, you know, because everyone comes in and wants to puff their chest at you, and I'm like, okay. All right. You want to play that game? <laughs> Here we go. I, uh, I can chirp. Yeah. So let's do that. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I end up antagonizing <laughs> a lot. He's a little bit of an actual psychopath. Once that makeup goes on, I'm not Robbie anymore. I'm Stranger. Yeah. And like, it's a whole nother character, a whole nother person. It's like, just don't, uh, on the back of my jacket now, it says, don't trust the clowns. And there's <laughs> good reason for that. It's it's just like, honestly, the Joker, man. Like, one minute he was a normal guy. Or that goes even for when people play him, you know? It's like they take it yeah. to method and they, you know, they, even on set, they'll, they'll be the Joker. They'll be, you know, they'll, just to get in that mindset of that character. But... I, for one, am a fan of, of, of Method because I, I really like when when people, you know, actors, whatever it may be, uh, you know, take the time to actually bring that character to life and, and have a lot of fun with it. You know, I think that's what makes Haunts so much fun, especially when, when you know, characters go out of their way to um, interact with the, with the, with the fans and, and everybody. I, I'm a huge fan oh, yeah. of all that stuff. So from what I'm hearing, it looked like you, you did it your own way. And I, I, I honestly would have laughed just seeing all the stuff you just told me. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an absolute psycho. I will uh, go and end up... Uh, Again, we get to do a lot of stuff at parks, you know, at Dark Harbor rather than that other parks would never even dream of letting their people do. You know, I I am a huge fan of uh, riding the swing set. Nice. Um, I will chase, you know, teenagers. I will chase them when they're running away from me and they think they're safe there. Yeah. And I'll circle the swing set once and they won't have started yet. And I'll just climb the bar and get up and sit right behind that kid and grab him by the back of the, the swing sets and be like, <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to get to do stuff like that, man. And it's like you never in any other haunt ever, other than like, you know, some of the more crazy ones uh, that are over the country, right. um, you don't get to do. So, yeah, again, thank you, David, for embracing our crazy. Cause, yeah. Shout out uh, to Dark Harbor in general, man. I mean, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is no other haunt like Dark Harbor that gives them the freedom to do what you want to do, Not you know, within all. within certain limits. But yeah, yeah, yeah of there's, course. There's there's way more freedom there to do stuff uh, than any like you know like a place like Knots and Horror Nights where you got to follow set stories or you know to stay in that kind of zone. But it seems like as long as you're in character with the storyline, but you're kind of playing that character to how you would play it. You yeah, could, you you have a lot of freedom to do that. And you know, the first year I ever went was 2019. Um, and I, I just immediately right off the bat, that's the first thing I noticed was there's a lot of freedom here. There's a lot of chaos in a good way. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, a hundred percent. It's, it's just, I love the chaos. I love, I, I love watching people get scared. I, I just, I, I like being that guy who's on the side, who's just laughing with his friends because we're having a good time. We're watching everybody, you know, everyone's, everyone's having a good time and, and just to watch people. I like to people watch at haunts if that's. 
You know, oh no, just, totally. Just to see people get scared. I mean, I did that a lot at Knotts uh, in 2019. It was just cool to sit on a bench in Ghost Town and see people's reactions. So. Oh yeah, getting getting to watch. You know, over time, obviously, they become your friends. You know, even in and out of makeup, eventually you make friends with them. So yeah, it's it's really cool to go get you know to watch your friends work. Right. Um. You know, so on our Haunters nights or our nights, we do get to go to uh you know Knotts or, or Halloween or nights. It's yeah, I agree with you. 100% my favorite activity. You just go watch my friends work right. and see what they do, you know? Sometimes it's cool because you learn something to do. You know, you're like, oh, that was really nice. I like what they did. Yeah. Um, but that makes sense. <laughs> if Dark Harbor was your first year in 2019, that, that, that's why you didn't see me because I uh, ended up not working 2019 because uh, at the end of the first weekend. Right. So I think, I don't know if Media Night was in that first weekend, but – I uh, destroyed my ankle, like oh. absolutely destroyed it. Um, I actually may have seen you then because I was there on media night. Yeah, it was like, I don't know if it was that first weekend or what, but I remember, uh, you know, I thought I remembered it being early that year, but right. I, you know, I don't, you remember obviously the front setup with the gates and then right. those big fake rocks that they have stacked out, you know, out front of the gates. Um, right after opening gates, you know, we're, we're sprinting into the crowd. Yeah. And one of the things I would do, you know, me being, I'm, I'm six foot two. So I right. tower over people. I loved to run up onto those rocks and just like stalk people down some jeepers, creepers, kind of like yeah. look in for your prey. And, uh, <laughs> I, I got up on top and I'm kind of like, all right, I'm going to go this path. Right. I went to step off that rock. And you know, those rocks are like often three feet high. Right. Um, I went to step down and my heel caught the edge of the rock and I went full body weight down on the side of my ankle Um, in front of, this is right. Mind you at opening gate, like very, very opening gate. We've not been open for a minute, even a full minute hasn't happened. Right. And then I get up and I drop and I just sank. Like I disappeared and the whole crowd just, Oh yeah. Um, So I don't know if you've heard of snuggles at all. I don't think I have another one of the sliders. But a couple of the other guys saw me right. and I immediately, you know, I've, I've heard you on a couple other your podcasts say, you broke. This is one of those moments I broke because yeah. I jumped up and I had to like hold on to a guest right. in order to even stand. Um, and he was like, dude, I saw that. Are you okay? And I was like, nope. <laughs> like, big smile. Like, uh-uh, yeah. man, I'm not good at all. Yeah. So I ended up walking in, uh, basically holding on to this guy and a buddy of one of the other sliders ran up and was like, dude, I saw that. Are you okay? And I was like, uh, uh-uh, tell Scott, I'm going to med tent and, uh, got backstage, walked to my box instead of going to med tent. Cause I wanted to like, you know, see if I needed to do anything. And I right. looked at my ankle was probably, you know, that big around blown up, like over my, my shoe, my sliding shoe. Right. And, uh, <sighs> Uh, yeah, no, they, they came back with a wheelchair. Um, and for the next like few weeks I was seeing a doctor and the doctor, like, I don't know how it's not broken. All the bruising is proving to a break. Um, you know, everything looks like it's legitimately broken. And I was like, well, I can't move it. (laughs) I couldn't move. I couldn't move my foot other than like barely wiggle my toes. Right. Um, for like at least a solid two weeks. So That was rough, and oh, it ruined my, you know, my 2019 season. I, I've been through a broken ankle injury, dude. It is not fun. Um, it, it is yeah. literally the worst thing ever, the worst pain ever. Uh, mm-hmm. So you bring up ankles, and it just brings back my PTSD of breaking mine. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not so, fun, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not. I, I was in, uh, you know, I had to get surgery. Then I was in physical therapy for about a month. Yeah. And eventually, yep. uh, you know, then, you know, after going to physical therapy, he told me to try some exercise at home. Uh, I was on a boot and then, you know, I had to get off the boot and it, it was like a whole three month process of just getting back. Like I, I remember too, like I, I had not used my left leg for so long that the muscle on my freaking, on my lower leg was just, there was no muscle. It was just, it was just fat. <laughs> so yeah, like it's it. just straight cankle. Yeah. yeah, you can just feel the bone, and it just feels weird. Mm-hmm. Like uh, so, mm-hmm. it, it was. I mean, going upstairs, just doing all you know, being on crutches, all that. It sucked, man. It, At it, least you were lucky enough to have it be your left ankle. Yeah. Um, mine was my right ankle, and I was down in Long Beach, and I lived in Pasadena. Wow. So I had to drive home that night with my left foot. That sucks, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember leaving and being like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm I gotta figure it out. Right. Yeah. That. So that, that that's i mean i you're better now though that's good right you're you're good now yeah 
Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm better now. Um, Definitely. So obviously, you know, with 2020 being kind of a, you know, a, a season where there wasn't very many things to do and whatnot. What are your goals for for 2021, man? What do you do? You want to come back to Harbor again? Do you want to keep doing um, this? I've, uh, you know, my life has kind of taken a few twists and turns. Right. Um, I, of course, I, you know, I've reached out to David Wally. Uh, I reached out to him last year, you know, like uh, not last year, but I guess in 29. No, it was last year when we still weren't sure if it was going to happen. Right. I think I remembered I, I messaged him like May or something like, Hey, I don't know if dark Harbor is going to happen, but if it does, can I come down and play for a weekend? He was like, if we're working, yeah, come on down. So right. I would love to end up going back and doing at least a weekend. Uh, I no longer uh, live in LA anymore. Uh, right. Unfortunately, I've made a move. Um, you know, so I'm just kind of, you know, playing haunt world by ear at this point, if I can go back, you know, and, and get the opportunity to play for a weekend and, you know, bet your ass I'll be down there in full makeup, throwing myself on the floor. But right. We'll see what, uh, what, what brings forward, you know, um, I know there's always like new escape rooms and things popping up. So I keep my eyes peeled. I had my time. I worked at the basement as well in Silmar. Nice. Uh, the horror themed escape room out there, um, which was a lot of fun. Okay. Um, you know, not only hosting, but working inside as an actor there. So, you know, it, it's caught on a lot, the horror, uh, haunt field in general, you know, whether it's home haunts or, you know, escape rooms or something different. Uh, so it's everywhere, you know, wherever you go, you're going to find something. Um, and you know, I'm just kind of playing it by ear on what I get to do next. Right. What is actually, uh, one, uh, you know, you've already worked Horror Nights, you've worked, uh, at Queen. Where's one place, uh, like a dream place you would love to do either a season for or a night for where, where, where would you love to scare at for one night or even a season? Um, you know, I, there's a, there's a part of me, uh, that would love to do like 17th door just cause they are wild. Like I had a blast at 17th door. The, that's the extra mile that I want to go as a scare actor. It's the one thing that like as stranger, I don't get to go that far, but Oh, if I could like grab people and shake them and like come up behind them like oh it would be a whole other deal so getting to actually like take people to that next level of scare you know because obviously you know in my escape room i could touch people and do things like that within your character's reason which was again awesome um but 17th you know really looks cool in that aspect but if i had to choose legitimately uh, I would probably want to go to Carnival and run those streets, you know, nice. with Joker. Uh, and that would be me getting my big three uh, for SoCal, which would be, you know, like that, that, that would let me retire happy. You right. know, I Doing could literally put my hat up. I yeah. like that, man. I like put that. another patch on my vest and be cool with it. You know, you know, you're um, the one person that I've heard uh, with knots that says he would do Carnival over ghost town. I love being a clown, man. Yeah. I love being a clown. Um, Ghost Town is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, Bex I mean, and what they do over the in streets right like there, Death. Yeah. yeah, Death. And I got a lot of a lot of friends, you know, through the Knots Network, right. you know. Uh, and a lot of those guys are killing it on Ghost Town. Personally, I don't know what in the hell I'd do. <laughs> I don't know what character I would do, you know, where Carnival, like, and everyone says playing a clown's easy, you know. But you really, you can't let yourself uh, get twisted in clown, I think, personally, because you're a clown. You know, you are a showman 100% of the time. Um, But I love, you know, being stranger is a joy. Yeah. That is letting out a lot of, a lot of stuff (laughs) on the inside that I get to do as a clown, you know, whether I'm making you laugh, you know, I've had people that you scare them and you know, they drop a deep fried Oreo and it falls on the ground. Oh. And I, I get on all fours and I eat that thing off the ground. <laughs> you can't, you can't do that and ghost town. You yeah. know what I mean, like that's just not in that nature of character. Right. We're like a clown. Oh, I can eat that Oreo off the ground. Yeah. And it's, it's weird. And people are like, you know, you couldn't do that anymore. With Obvi- corona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah dude we uh i would i go ham you know yeah it's that kind of attitude with clowns that i'm all for you know yeah. taking it that weird extra mile that whether you laugh or scream i'm doing something right right 
And, and you know what's funny too with Carnival, I've always I've always seen it as probably the most difficult scare zone at knots to work at. Only because I would say it's not filled with shadows or anything. You're in the spotlight the entire time. Whereas yeah. like in Ghost Town at CS and the um, Forsaken Lake, there is dim lights, there is shadow, oh, yeah. there is fog. This one, you're in the spotlight all night, so you got to be very creative of how you're going to accomplish the scare and and what you what you're going to do scare tactic wise to totally. to get that scare. So I applaud you for even wanting to take on that challenge, man. And I and I oh, had it in my mind that you could you would accomplish it no problem. You know, if you if you let me and Matt roam around as clowns, uh, it's going to get dangerous. Oh, uh, me and him together on that street, I think, could be. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun. I would, I would have too much fun. I think I, I don't know if I'd end up wanting to leave, you know, if I ended up going to that side of things. Um, but yeah, I, I that's what well, I, I like not needing fog. Granted right. when I get to play in it, you know, I will utilize it, mm -hmm. but if there's no reason for me to hide, like I'm going to be wild. To the wall, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be weird, you yeah. know? Um, and I love that stuff. So, right. you know, that's what, that's where I go in haunting. I like to take, you know, take that 10 and turn it up to 15. You, so. you, you know, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Matt, I got to give him a shout out, uh, for last week's podcast, this podcast, some future podcasts coming up <laughs> guys really been helping me book a lot. I, I almost consider him my unofficial historian of the nights of horror. Because, a little side management. <laughs> yeah, it's like he, he just comes in and he's like, well, who do you want on the show? Like, who do you, you know? So he, he's been helping me, but I always call him the historian because I think one time we were talking about like, oh, yeah, I remember doing this video with this person. And he was like, to be correct, it was actually this video uh, on this date. And I'm like, I run nerd. the channel and I don't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> You're a nerd, Matt. You're a nerd. Uh, no, we love Matt, though. I mean, Matt, uh, shout out no, to you, Matt. Great. You set up last week's podcast. Uh, you set up this one. And we got some future ones coming out that he he's helping me set up as well. So, um yeah, Matt. Uh, the only the next thing we got to do with Matt now is just get him on the show. But that's incredibly. That's a whole another story of its own. <laughs> Might be a little camera shy there, eh, buddy? <laughs> he he. You're feels, flying around the bonfire, but uh, he can't show up on a camera. What is it? He doesn't feel uh, like he's earned that spot yet. That he hasn't done enough in his haunt career. That he he's podcast worthy. And I'm like, dude, I saw you at a street food Tuesday, and I freaking was willing to get you on a podcast just for doing that. And you were at your very. According to him, his very lowest uh, of times of scaring, like he, you know, but. So you haven't gotten to, gotten the chance to see him out on Carnival Streets yet. I have, uh, I have in 2019, but we didn't really know each other then. Got um, it. Got it. No, you know, it, it'd be different this year. Like if I go see him, then I, then I'm gonna know who he is. But yeah, totally. I, I did see him work a little bit on Carnival uh, when I did go through there. I mean, you can't miss him. He's wearing a freaking bowler hat, so. But you know, there there was a few. I remember. Uh, I think, I think Foz did Carnival for a little bit too, and he was a bowler hat guy for right. a little bit. Him and his monkey character. That kid can fly. Yeah. That kid. If you see him at Decay, I mean, also the entire Decay Brigade crew. Man, those guys are. Whew. <laughs> I love watching their shows, yeah. man. I would, you know, they're they're a hell of a crew. Um, you know, cricket. Those guys. I've seen them. <laughs> jump some crazy bowls while sliding and i'm like right i go i go over and under i'm like <laughs> i don't i don't jump bro i'm too tall for that right um but yeah no all those guys are real cool so to see matt working carnival is is fun that's why i'm like i know if i worked with him out on that street it would get be chaotic, uh, dangerous man. i i i would i would definitely, get fired probably <laughs> i would be in that zone all night just to capture it on camera because we need some we need some good footage for you guys yeah, yeah, there's an often running joke of like, how long is it going to take for Robbie to get fired? Like, <laughs> I'm somehow never, and it's, it's shocking. Hey, man, you, you must be doing something right to not get fired then. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know, man. It's I'm just lucky that I've ever gotten to do it all, you know, and get these chances to go play with my friends in the dark. So, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, you know, you know going back to the, uh, the Queen, man, I mean... I, one of the things I like hearing from from people who've worked Queen is uh, if they've seen anything paranormal on the damn boat when they were working there, man. Have you seen or had any encounters? Unfortunately, I'm not one of the lucky ones that has experienced <laughs> anything, man. I am. Uh, I'm always out running on the on the streets. You know, I'm. I haven't had a break room on the ship. The most right. I spend time on the ship is getting makeup done. Right. Um, and uh, that is, you know, the most of my. 
my time. Now I can't say that I haven't had like creeped out experiences, right? Where you just have a weird that you weird know. feeling, gut feeling, yeah. Yeah, and I remember uh, a few years back going with one of my ex girlfriends. Well, now ex girlfriends, I guess. Um, and we were going through one of the ship mazes. I think at the time it was B three forty. Right. Um, and we got into like a long hallway that wasn't. There was no actors, and you know it could have been they were changing out. It could have been that that's just how it was planned. But it was a real long hallway with like just like a kind of dimmish blue light all the way down at the end right. and then like a light behind us. So very, very dim and just strangely quiet all of a sudden for, as you know, the mazes always have sound going somewhere right. and whether it's echoing behind you or in front of you, we got into this hallway and for a split second, I was like, did we take a wrong turn? Right. Are we like in an area we're not supposed to be? And I was like, let's, let's just keep walking. Like, I guess we, you know, we'll find out. But I was you know, weirded out because it got, like I said, just very quiet, quiet for yeah. being in a maze. Um, and uh, yeah, dude, it was just strange, you know, just weird and creepy. And I've, you know, heard all the stories about everyone who's died on that ship, you know, all right. the different, how it crashed into that other boat. I know all of her lore and all that fun stuff. Um, but I haven't had anything like directly happen. Just some really creepy stuff. Experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually feel that there was actually, I think, I forget what maze I went through, but there was a part where it was just quiet. And, you know, knowing the history of the boat and everything, you just, you start, you, you do start feeling yeah. uncomfortable, you know, you start feeling on edge and whatnot. Uh, totally. So, so I, I have experienced stuff like that where I was just like, because there's not really, like most mazes, there's not really kind of anywhere to, they don't tell you where to go. You kind of just... You're following a, a direct path where you're yeah. assuming you see lights and sound. You're like, okay, I guess I go that way. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I have definitely felt that, man. And it's something else, man. I, 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 my goal one day is to ghost hunt on that, you know. Even even in like when you do your orientation and they have like, we have extra time. Like you guys want to go look through the mazes and just check them out before right. they go into action. Even doing that sometimes during the day. Right. Like walking around with like a group of your friends, you know, just like exploring the maze and what they did. Yeah. Even that can be weird. Yeah. You know, granted they've done it up, but you know, some of that is just, ugh, it's, it's a little chilly and yeah. I'm, I'm one to like, let's go to that graveyard at three in the morning, you know, <laughs> like where's the creepy place that I can hide out, you yeah. know? Um, let me go explore, you know, I, I, I grew up going to Calico ghost town, the legitimate one right. out in the desert. Me and my family used to go camping. And so, you know, I would go to that actual ghost town and I loved it as a kid. Um, so it's, you know, I've always been into the creepy ghost story stuff, but that ship's got some other, some other weird it's vibes, man. Level, man. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole new level, man. It's funny. Cause I think that's one of the places I really want to go to. You mentioned uh, the actual Calico ghost town, but another place I really want to check out in Arizona is uh, tombstone. Um, oh yeah. I love, of course. love that story. Love that film. Um, but yeah, I mean, places like that because of the history, you're gonna you're gonna feel the the, the creepiness, the like if someone's behind you, if someone's following you, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just it's just that because of the history and because you know people have died and you know all this stuff, you're gonna 100%. be you're gonna be feeling so uncomfortable, man. Um, you know, it, it, it's been it's been really fun to dive into the Queen Mary scene a lot lately. Um, granted, I've only been one time. But I can guarantee you when it comes back, I'll be going more and more again. Um, oh, yeah. And, and talking to, you know, people like you and, and you know, just all the talent that I, I've talked with, you know, it, it's just to get an insight of this this event, you know. I mean, I, I hear a lot of amazing stories from everybody. You know, everyone seems to be like a family when it comes down to oh, yeah. to scaring and all that. I think I, I was talking to uh, Mooch today. And I was telling him I was going to be talking with you, and he was, like, super excited for this one. And I know when I tell Matt about this, he'll be, like, excited Oof. about it as well. Um, so I I'm just incredibly thankful, uh, incredibly um, humbled, and just incredibly honored to be interviewing people like you, to, to, to have a platform where you guys are allowed to share your story. As I And I think a lot of people always forget this when they go to haunts, but... You guys are human. You guys are people, you know, and it's like uh, a little bit at least. Yeah, a little just a little bit, you know. There's a little bit in you that's like, uh it's peeking out every little now part, and then. There's I, I have two voices in my head that <laughs> sit in the back locked up in a cage that like I don't get to let out. And that is uh 
stranger and yeah. then uh, a green man who uh, lives at the top of Mount Crumpet. Um, <laughs> that, you know, again, I'm going to leave it at that just right. in lieu of not, you know, getting sued by anyone. Right. Um, so those guys are in the back of my head and uh, they don't get to be let out often. So, yeah, when they come out, it's a different story. But oh, we yeah. are yeah, people, I guess. Yeah. I uh, look like this normally. There you go. Um, before we, we sign off, I need to, I need to ask you, of course, I got a couple more questions, but, uh, I need to hear, do you have any funny stories from either Horror Nights or, or, or Dark Harbor of like guest reactions or, I, I you probably have a ton, man. I want to hear some of these. I was going to say, I do yeah. have a few of them. Um, Maybe what let's, do, I, let's oh. do a couple from each, you know, let's do, uh, I was going to say, I can yeah. try and do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my all time favorite ones, like tops, Hey, I was actually seeing some of your other podcasts, obviously interviewing right. some people about it. <clears throat> and uh you know the one that comes to my mind first and foremost is i think it was my second year at horror nights right. and uh i was on streets i wasn't doing my speaking character um i was out scaring um which was a lot of fun i had some weird celebrity interactions and stuff like that right um but i am chasing this one woman around um chasing her like and this is before i don't know if you had been when they had the blues brothers stage yes. still over there yeah how they used to gate that off for horror nights right. right and that was for uh like you know what i remembered as is the van helsing uh you right. know house van of horrors Helsing, house of horrors yeah um i've seen the whole plethora of her change you know so, I, I miss uh, house of horrors by the way I, I that was one of my favorites i <sighs> To put it, to put, that's another side story short. <laughs> we were doing a rehearsal one night late on the property right. at a uh, universal for Grinchmas. And I, uh, I hope this doesn't get me in trouble. I got to see house of horrors get torn down, oh, like man. with a, with a bulldozer caterpillar arm, like rank down and you saw the operating room and it was just like, Damn. Oh, there was a few of us that just stood there and like wanted to cry because yeah. it was, happening in front of our very eyes i mean i remember being sad when you know it uh, it was closing you know and then then the walking dead coming i thought was was going to be cool and and i I had a lot of fun going through that every time i went through it you know i would save it mostly for daytime operation but i i had a lot of fun going through it well we're glad you liked it man we put a lot of (laughs) put a lot of time after blood sweat and tears into that walking dead man that was fun man that was cool i i I thought the whole designing the easter eggs everything man if you really paid attention it was it was a fun time I have some scars from that maze from when it first opened that things weren't fully, uh, you know, what you're going to get in any sort of opening of a vicinity that weren't like a couple sharp edges that, you know, we're walkers, we're throwing ourselves into walls. Um, that I, uh, I have some scars from just leaning a little too far and going right. a little too hard, uh, in that, in that their prison room. Oh, um, dude. So that was, that was actually my well. favorite. That was my favorite set piece right there. That prison. Such a oh. mem- memorable. Uh, that was one of my favorite seasons of The Walking Dead. And when they brought oh, it to yeah. Horror Nights and, and made that whole prison facade before it was a full time attraction, and then seeing it again in the full time attraction, it was just it's it's uh, it's memorable to me. Yeah, no, I loved you know those those uh, gunshots get real <laughs> real locked in your head, and I can right. still remember every word of the Survivor up top. Go go go! <laughs> Get your people out of here! Yeah. Go! We made a song about it. Actually, <laughs> we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. I got a little excited. Oh man, she's been dead now for a couple of years, and it hurts to think about it. I but, know, right? Uh, yeah. So I was chasing this woman, doubling back. Right. I apologize. No, uh, you're good. <laughs> too again, too many stories. Again, I got um, I got another podcast just called Shoot the Shit. You're welcome back anytime. We'll talk about it, man. Copy. All right, cool. Um, Yeah, so I'm chasing this woman. I chase her into the barricade of Blues Brothers, which was for that line. Right. And uh, she she cowers down. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to stay here until you get up and face me. You know, I'm going to hang on over you. So I'm holding the railing, you know, kind of doing a couple stomps over her just to try and continue to freak her out. Right. And I, in a split second, like this, this is why it's one of my favorite stories. I like looked up to like look around to see if anyone was going to come and like support me to continue to scare her. Cause that happens a lot, you know, quite often that, yeah. you know, you see one person on top of someone cowering and the people whole swarm. monsters come. Yeah. Yep. So I was expecting that. And in this split second that I, you know, turned and looked away, I look back down and before I can even do anything, she has untied my boot and just gets up and runs. <laughs> And I'm like, I, I can't even be mad. That's genius. Yes. I've never heard like, that. 
Dude, it was the wildest thing I've ever experienced between like a guest as a monster. Wow. Because you know, you know, obviously they say you know don't, don't touch the monsters. Yeah. But I, I couldn't even be mad. I was like, you you outsmarted me 110. Yeah. percent I just never stood heard there that in my like, life. Oh yeah, untied my wow. boot completely. Like it, all it took, you know, I didn't have it double knotted and whatnot, right. and taped up. But she just like whoop and pulled my loop undone. Oh my god. And so like, how do I? Do I go chase her? Like, what do I do? I can't, my boots untied. You just give her so the that, win at that point, man. Dude, I did. I just yeah. sat there and like left. I like broke character in my own mask and was like, what the hell? Yeah. And like walked off kind of sad and kind of defeated, but also just like <laughs> impressed. It's that moment from Anchorman of like, you you ate a whole wheel of cheese? Yeah. I'm not even mad. That's amazing. You're like, you're like, that escalated quickly. I mean, that oh, really got out of hand. <laughs> it really did. But it was, it was like, mm, like chef's kiss, like of a defense mechanism. Yeah. On her part. And uh, that forever will stick out to me as one of the best. Like, what the hell just happened moments? Yeah. You know, you're like, you, like you said, a split second, and then you turn around, and your boots are untied. You're Dude. Like, what? It was only the one. But one was enough for me to be like, what? How do I? What you're do like, I do? You're like, as a freaking, you know, as a scare actor, you're thinking, this has never happened to me ever. Never. You're like, what the hell? You're like, you never hear stir. This, honestly, this is the first time I'm ever hearing of this. Like, it this was is, amazing. This is a, this this impresses me. It was yeah. No props to that lady. I you know I don't know wherever whoever she may you be, are. I mean, you, thumbs up to you. Smartest uh, defense mechanism in a in a. She's probably gonna be watching this. Like, I remember when I. Did I that. I don't <laughs> think so, but I hope so. Yeah. I, she is, man. You made she comments like, I remember when I did that. <laughs> Dude, I would be so happy just to get in touch with her and be like, can we get married? You're smart. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you know, I, my kids need to have your DNA because you outsmarted the shit out of me. Um, no, that was that was definitely a number one of like a story I can never live yeah, down. Yeah. Um, you know, I uh, shoot. I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, obviously the story that I told earlier about kissing Sparrow in the right. in the slider show, that was a huge moment just because that's A, you know, the creation of my name. Uh, and B, you know, just getting to smack them pretty bird lips. <laughs> he likes it. He's all about it. That's that's part of the reason I think Rum Spice is even still around. He's waiting for another he was, kiss. He was wait, he's waiting for you to come back. You know, Rum no, Spice comes ready. out. Rum oh. Spice comes out when Stranger Danger comes around. You know, that's a that's also dangerous. I'm just saying, if you work, if you happen to work the same weekend, Rum Spice comes out. You know, it's 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 meant to be. <laughs> oh no, dear God! Oh, oh that will be a nightmare. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, one of the other ones that's rather funny is uh, me and Squeaks were out scaring. We were rolling around the park together one night, um, just playing a game of like cat and mouse. You know, right. we we go to the front and split off and meet back. And for some reason, we had, like, lost some contact. And uh, <laughs> we both go for the exact same scare running full speed right. at the same time. And I don't notice till we're literally, like, about to hit each other. Like, I've dropped to my knees, and I see big old boy come and sliding at me. And, like, obviously, I'm 6'2", so I'm tall. Right. But, like, I still hug squeaks like I'm a fucking five-year-old. Right. Like, I have to reach up, like, hey, dad. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we're we're sliding directly at each other. Luckily, I'm somewhat behind him. So I pop halfway up and, like, start to run. But we're already at the point. I don't know if you remember those, like, prop. Or not prop, but, like, they're, like, the big uh, I don't know, set designs that are just kind of standing out in the middle of the, right. the front alleyway out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're just basically, like, big little photo ops. Right. Or whatever you want to call them. Big yeah. little. That's a good one. Big little, there you um, go. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? They're just kind of sitting there in the middle of the thing. Yeah. We both, I pop up behind him and, like, try to, like, tap him on the shoulder. But by that point, we're both, like, into each other and falling into that side of that box in front of guests. <laughs> Just completely just like smash, hit the wall. Boom. And with, you know, my self and big old squeaks flying into it, I'm surprised that thing didn't fall over. <laughs> um, so we just, you know, I left because I was like, I don't know what just happened. Yeah. I walked off set like how, what, you know, laughing yeah. the whole way out. But oh, when two, uh, when two big boys collide, it's not safe for anyone. I feel that, man. I'm six foot six. So I, I know now it's, how it is. <sighs> 
Yeah, I mean, we, just, we just walking the mazes in Queen Mary, I'm hitting my head like, every, okay. every five steps, you know? Like, I think I almost had a concussion the night I went. I was, like, hitting my head on the pipes. I was like, is this not tall friendly? Like, can someone <laughs> oh, no, warn me not. about this, like, before nope. I go in? The ship itself? Oh, heck no, dude. Yeah, That's built not. for littler people, man. Yeah. <laughs> Those taller guys are not safe on that shit. I, hit, I kid you not, I, in, in Feast, I hit my head at least three or four times. Oh, oh, and did they make you crawl through the through the tunnel? Uh, Yeah, it was fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to, but, you know, I never got the opportunity since I'm always out walking around. And, I always uh, go for it. I'm like, it's funny to see a tall-ass guy struggle to tra- crawl through this, so let's do it. I just got spiked with another uh, flashback memory. Speaking of going through mazes, uh, there was a night. That we, oh uh, shoot, I want to say it was 2017. Right. Um, and we had like 94 monster call outs that night. Damn. There was like an extreme lack of people, like lack right. of people in mazes, lack of people uh, on the streets. And we had just come off set. I think it was like close right after one of our slider shows. Right. And, uh, I remember coming off set. I'm sitting there with Fido and Squeaks, like hanging out backstage. And uh, Kat came up to us and was like, hey, um, this is real weird. But David has asked, you know, we need help. Right. The mazes are so low on monsters. There was so many call outs tonight. Will you guys go run through mazes? And we were like, will we what? (laughs) Are you saying we get to go? Are are you saying we get to go through mazes? And she was like, "Be smart, but yes." And I, I'm like I said, I'm pretty sure we had just finished a show, and I think we all just like threw a shot of water back, and we're like, right. "Let's go." And I remember I rolled in with Squeaks and Fido, and I think it might have been Nemo. I can't remember because we all scattered pretty quickly, but we went straight through Intrepid, and like. <laughs> Oh man, I'm sure people still hate us till this day for that. Oh man, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> we were just well, it, it, we were just having fun. We never right. got to go and play in mazes, so we were trying to find out like where are we gonna scare? Like, let's go find out. Especially that like courtyard of like the cemetery part with the train area. Like, I can imagine we went, a lot of fun there. We went straight to the fog room. Yep. <laughs> and we're just in there, and Squeaks, of course, has his his whistle, so you can hear us coming from a mile away. And right, man, that night was so much fun when that happened. <laughs> I think about two hours into that, allowing the the some of the streets team to go into the mazes, though it was shortly cut <laughs> <laughs> and said, like, you know what, we're just gonna suffer, <laughs> that, if I remember correctly, but. You know, don't quote me, David. Don't hate me if uh, I'm saying something you don't like. I apologize. I'm just sharing memories that are often fun. Oh man. Yeah, no, I miss the fog. The taste. Has of, it? Uh, uh, has it been a rough 2020 for you, man? Did you miss it? Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, there's a bug in you that you know you like I, stuff. Yeah, I missed my haunt. Um, you know, you can talk to you know Looney and all them. I was FaceTiming them while I was out here uh, while they were doing meetings, and they'd be in the middle of like team huddle before they go out to break out for you know front gate right and uh yeah i i was hurt i you know on halloween that year when i wasn't in 2019 even for me uh when i wasn't out on streets staring on halloween i was like what am i what am i doing right now like i'm sitting here watching a movie like this doesn't no 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 i haven't not worked a halloween in years so it yeah it was weird um and then I, you know, I had a, I could have had the opportunity to work at a haunt out where I'm at now in Idaho. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, way to drop that at the end. I'm in Idaho now, guys. <laughs> Idaho, um, there it is. Out of nowhere, um, <laughs> uh, you know, up in the mountains. But uh, there's a place out here called Haunted World uh, right. that I, or The Haunted World. I'm not certain on its full name, but, you know, it's got a corn maze and some cool stuff that I'd like to go check out um, right. that I was going to try and work, but. Uh, My current gig that I was doing, uh, our season ran really late, and uh, I don't think uh, that I got off my last roll until, like, the week before Halloween, Um, and then we were still getting fire calls to go out and roll even into uh, November, so, you know, it, most of that was running chippers and whatnot, but, um, 
yeah, it, it was, I couldn't have worked a haunt season cause I was out in the mountains somewhere spraying wet stuff on the red stuff. Thank uh So yeah, I mean, you being, you being a, uh, so you're a firefighter then, huh? I'm a wildland firefighter out here in Boise now. Yeah, dude. Uh, I just want to take the moment to say, you know, even though you're not in California, thank you for your service, man. I mean, it's, that's, that's, I appreciate that's, it, man. that is a very tough and competitive job right there. You know, and, it's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun too. Yeah, um, but it, it's also it comes with you know having a little bit of uh, a little bit of danger in it too. So, you know, we we really appreciate all the work that you do out there, man. It, it's yeah, of course. It's, it's people like you that are you know putting your guys' lives on the line to to save others, man. And that, that words can't express how much we thank you for that. So, of course, man. You know, at the end of the day, we're uh, you know the way I look at it is I get uh, I get paid to go live out in the woods and you know. Eat help try and save the animals and the, and houses for people you know that's the biggest reason we're out there is to go you yeah. know protect land and property um yeah. but at the end of the day you know i'm waking up in a tent and uh with the smell of smoke you know still in my clothes you right. know after for at the end of the day you're on you're out for 14 to 21 days at a time with some of your best friends you right. know doing what you you got to do a but b you know what you turn out to love to do whether you're digging a fire line you know or operating with an engine um you know you're you're still getting to do something cool you know yeah. you see some of these tenders carrying four thousand gallons of water and you're hooking up your engine to it and dumping in and then running right back out with that hotshot crew to you know go assist them with this fire line edge and they're sawing down you know probably 25 35 foot tall trees that you're getting in there and it's fully lit on flame and you're just putting it out yeah. and it's awesome. You know, I get to see some really cool stuff. Yeah. Right. It's, it's dangerous. And, um, you know, for some people it's, it's too hard. I, I guess I'd say that, you know, the being away from home, um, you know, not showering for, you know, sometimes 14 right. days that can really eat at you. Yeah. Um, but it's awesome. You know, I, that's why I'm like, you know, I would love to go haunt again, but I have, uh, I found something that's got a little bit long, uh, longer of a seasonal right. <laughs> perspective than haunt does as much as I would love to haunt for the rest of my life. Right. Um, unless I go to, you know, the other side of it and, uh, work in creating of my own haunt or something, you know, that's Ooh. never gonna, you know, which would be cool, never but know. I don't, uh, but years down the road, you know, yeah. I'm saying the same thing about having kids. Let's not even talk. About it, you know? <laughs> it's terrifying in my brain and I don't even want to think about it as much as it would be cool. You know, it, right. it terrifies me. Um, yeah. So I found fire now. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's great. You know, just like, uh, you know, mama, mama was saying, all of us have a little pyromaniac in you. I saw you your last episode with her. Yeah. There's a little bit of us in there, you know, I, I love it, man. I, I first I, time you get to, uh, operate a drip torch or a propane torch on fire they're like hey we need you to burn this this entire hill and you're like so i i get to go set all that on fire <laughs> yeah that's how we're going to take care of this fire we're going to back burn and get rid of all that fuel over there right so so i get to go set it all on fire <laughs> yep that's your that's your job go get say it less i'm already doing it <laughs> oh yeah so yeah there's a little bit of that side of it too that you know comes up in fire that we all love so yeah well, I mean, I'm glad you're uh, you're doing good. For, you're doing well for yourself, man. I'm glad that everything's working out for you, man. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate it. And I'm hoping that we get to see you back on the streets uh, re uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, um, me too. And I'm hoping we get to see you work and and whatnot. And uh, it's been a fun time getting to know you more, man. Um, yeah, thank you for having me, man. Thank you again. Last question before we we sign off, man. I asked a lot of my guests these. What is your favorite horror film? You know, I was, I, I had to think about this. Like I said, I did a little bit of, you know, podcast watching some homework, your, your huh? other shows. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, man. Yeah, See what man. Can do, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's, oh, because it's, you know, I've I've watched horror movies since I was a kid. Right. Um, and I think I've come up with my answer. Um, again, you obviously know there's there's genres within right. horror itself. Subgenres, um, yeah. So like horror comedy Every day, my number one choice every time is the Cabin in the Woods. Nice, because it takes wow. a little bit of like that that like Scooby Doo gang mentality and right. like kind of plays on that. And it's some of it's corny, some of it's funny. You know, the yeah. cast is fantastic. Um, so if we're going that one, that's my favorite. But as a movie, uh, 
I was like, yeah, you know, it Pennywise. I that scared the crap out of me. But original or remake? Original, of course. Original, Tim Curry, baby, right. every day, Tim every Curry. day. Tim Curry. Oh. Yeah. However, you know, the new guy is fantastic. Uh, yeah. Bill Skarsgård. I yeah. I met him running into him in Hollywood somewhere at a bar, and nice. it was really random to turn around and be like, holy crap. It's Pennywise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had watched uh, his other show on Netflix. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, or at the moment, I had like binged it for a while. So his character, Rock? I'd, uh, not Castle Rock, but it was, uh, uh, I want to say it's like El, Elks. It, someone has got to know. I don't. I'm forgetting the name. I remember his name is, his character was Roman Pierce. Okay. Roman Pierce? I think. Okay. I don't know. I just remember turning around and being like, hey, you're that, yeah. you're that guy from that show. And he was like, hey, well, thanks. And then I think Pennywise and It had come out shortly after. Right. Again, sorry. Sidetrack. Damn. No, you're good. You're good. Um, My favorite horror film, uh, I haven't seen in a long time, is going to be Dead Silence. That is that is one I don't hear very often, honestly. That's Dead a, Silence, man. That's a That ringtone, man, is just... <sighs> It gives you chills. Every the time one with the puppets, it. dude, yeah. it blew my, I think it also traumatized me because it's a kid, uh, two houses up from us. So like our two house up neighbor yeah. was an older lady and we would like help her every now and then babysit, you know, something or I don't know. We had friendly neighbors. Yeah. Um, she had a puppet room, dude, Oh my a doll God. and puppet room. Like ventriloquist dummies and like old porcelain dolls up on the wall. And like, dolls still in boxes and it was this whole room dude like 360 dolls oh, and i can remember me and my sisters being like uh-oh <laughs> yeah. this is creepy and then that movie comes out years later and <sighs> trauma t- i mean i think that goes to show i mean it all started you know w- what made it really famous was chucky you know what i mean Chucky I mean, was yeah. the one who like really popularized that whole being afraid of dolls. Obviously, it goes back even further to like if you want to talk about the Twilight Zone, they yes, had an episode dude. of you know, and and that yeah. episode was creepy. But I mean, mm-hmm. I think I think it was Chucky that really brought it into more of a he mainstreamed a, it. Yeah, he yeah. mainstreamed it because yeah. he did he did blend a little bit of horror and comedy together, you know, right. with his quick wittedness and like rest in peace to the Chucky experience at the Halloween Horror Nights. Cause... Oh, I know the. The insult Lord, that was funny. God. Yes, man. I I was buddies uh, my first year. Of course, I was also a speaking character. Right. I got to work a lot um, with all. He's one of my better buddies now. Uh, but Josh Petersdorf, okay, um, who is now uh, the voice of Roadhog and, and Overwatch. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, Josh is a fantastic flipping voice actor, and he was one of the Chucky guys. Sorry that's if that awesome. spoils any Universal crap. Or to put anyone on blast. Uh, sorry, Josh. I love you. Um, <laughs> but me and him hung out a lot, and he was just just wicked funny as right. uh, you know, Chucky. And you know that was back when the Insult Emporium was able to take it far. Yeah. And so he was making some some real real good burns and jokes up there that like I think regular Chucky would have been proud of. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, like I said, Chucky is probably, I mean, I know a lot of people are afraid of it, but I, I am a big fan of the uh, original trilogy, of it, obviously. And even Seed of Chucky and Bride were some of the, were hilarious, you know? They were they were outrageous, but they were funny, you know? So We'll um, have to talk about it later, but I want to pick your brain about uh, the cult of Chucky, how you thought about that one. Yeah, for sure. I'm down, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about because I don't uh, I definitely because I wasn't also I also wasn't a fan of the uh, the reboot too. That was uh... yeah the cult of Chucky. The whole time I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Same I... thing. Same way I felt about like Jason X, dude. I was right. like, what are you guys doing? The filler that was the filler movie, so they can get Freddy versus uh, Jason going. Uh, they but it was keep... also that that like weird two thousands vibe where like everything with that crossover to the new millennium was right. like. Let's involve space in like ninety yeah. percent of our movies. Right. So it was like sci-fi uh, was just blowing up at that point. Uh, you know, Battlestar Galactica and everything just yeah, goes on sci-fi, you know. you know, and all that. So I mean, yeah, don't man. don't get me wrong, I love the sci-fi channel. Yeah, They've been doing some good stuff for years. Yeah, Those yeah. B-grade horror movies they throw on there are fantastic. Right. They're but, gonna be doing uh, a. They're re- they're bringing back Chucky too. So. TV show. Well then. 
Yeah. <laughs> and they're bringing back <laughs> the original be... actor as well, so it's going to be good. Oh, no way. That's yeah. going to be sweet, then. Okay. You know, they, they, they revived Leprechaun. I don't know how that did, but they, they revived him. I, it, yeah. And haven't they, got a chance. Now they're going to be bringing back Chucky. I don't know when it's supposed to come. I think COVID probably slowed a lot of stuff down, but it, it's still coming. Makes sense. And I'm, I'm super stoked for that. But with all that being said, man, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, do this show, man. Thank uh, you. I hope everyone has enjoyed this episode with Rob. Uh, he was quite the pleasure to talk to, man. A lot of funny stories, a lot of new stuff I've never even heard. Um, hey. And, and thank you for also can. letting us dip into a little bit of Horror Nights, man. We don't get very many Horror Nights people on the show, but yeah. for, us, for letting you for letting us dip into the mind of Horror Nights a little bit, that was pretty cool, man. And yeah, again, I'm just hoping I don't get in trouble for anything I said. If uh, anything comes back, it wasn't me. It was that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> with He's got that, a blue suit and a purge mask. Oh. There you go, man. It's 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 the, the, the friendly guy, man. He's That's all him. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast, wherever you uh, are listening or watching on YouTube or Spotify, Apple podcasts, all that fun stuff. Uh, if you guys enjoyed today's podcast, leave a like and leave some comments down below for Rob. Um, cause he was a fantastic guest guys. And you guys need to let him know that. Um, I, I let him know that, but you guys need to let him know that. And I know, I know, I already know one comment. Uh, I already know two comments probably from, uh, both Mooch and, uh, Matt. They'll be. That, you know, I'll get a message from them or something. So that would be cool. Um, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. There you go. Uh, Whatever. Yeah. A little love from the boys. Yeah, yeah. But uh, thank you guys so much. Oh, by the way, before we before we log off, do you have any social media or anything you want to plug? Um, since we're we're talking horror stuff, um, I'll go ahead and, and uh, you know plug my my QMDH right. underscore Stranger Danger. Uh, it's got you know shots from running around the park with some videos of sliding and me talking to some guests. So if you want to check that out, that is uh, my other one. If not, I mean, you can find me on my, my regular Instagram, which is underscore Robbie J R O B B I E J A Y underscore. Um, I'm not on the book of face much and I've never tweeted. So Instagram really add honestly. Yeah, it's, man. It's you know, it's now. turning into a little bit of TikTok too, which thank God I never had to download TikTok. It just kind of came over. It just you're just kind of seeing all the videos. You know, you just you scroll through the right places, you'll find all. Yeah. The videos, so and people like Sam are gonna upload their stuff either way. Yeah, so it's are, like, yeah. ah, I ain't gotta go to TikTok. Yeah. They put it up for me already on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That's one less. That's more space on your phone. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, exactly. With that being said, if you guys are new to the channel, follow us on social media as well, uh, at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. And if you guys, uh, if this is your first time on the channel, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button with that bell notification to be aware every time we put up videos. Much like this podcast, we do a lot of interviews with very uh, talented scare actors and, um, you know, whatever it is have to do with horror, we cover it. So thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Moving into...